go head to head with one of these guys in archery equipment when they're hard horned, that's saying something. That's five inches or better. Welcome to Eastman's Hunting TV. I'm your host, Ike Eastman. Today, we're gonna to come down, down here to Southern Colorado on an archery mule deer hunt. These guys are, it's late season, so they're they're starting the rut, and I've ne we've never done it. We've been down here hunting a lot, but we've never done the late season. It should be a lot of fun, so come along with me as I try and redline the fun meter and shoot one of these guys with my bow. I had the unique opportunity to hunt this area early in this season with my rifle, a savage lightweight hunter. I don't see another buck, but that doesn't mean there's not one in there. A couple nice bucks, there's a couple weird bucks in there. One of them, there's a couple that we call EHDs when they get affected by that disease, their antler growth gets all messed up. That one deer's a nice deer, it's just not quite what we're looking for, so. Head off and see what else we can find. I don't think I've ever seen a deer with G2s on both sides that short. It's interesting. Welcome back to Colorado on Eastman's. I've hunted this area a ton, and I know the key to it is covering country. Not just with boots on the ground, but also glassing through my six hours. Well, forward progression, I guess. Well, we changed, uh, areas a little bit we just weren't seeing anything up high in the burn these deer have a tendency to follow the green oak brush down they like it when it's green it's sweet i guess and when it starts to turn yellow like it was up high they start moving off so we're changing stuff up we're halfway through the hunt we've seen a lot of bucks this morning but it's kind of nice because we have a cloud cover which means these deer will stay out longer because it won't get hot see what happens haven't seen anything shootable yet today, a bunch of little bucks, but at least there's bucks. A couple of freaky ones. Keep looking. This has been one of those hunts. Five days and all I can turn up is little bucks and a ton of elk. One thing to keep in mind is mule deer bucks don't like being around elk. 
especially with the rutting activity going on. Well, back to the drawing board. Well, not seeing much. It's like these deer have disappeared. Little bucks, nothing, one little tiny four point. See what happens, I'm a little bit uh, frustrated. We have a little bit of time left. Maybe we can drum something up. We spent, I don't know, five days here in Colorado looking for what I would consider a shooter buck. We've seen a couple, maybe 170 deer, nothing in that 180 and above, which was what I was looking for. So this is the end of this. We may have the opportunity to come back uh, later in the season if time allows. It is what it is, frustration, and that's why we call it hunting, not killing, because it is a stalking and, and it is a pursuit. And sometimes those pursuits uh, don't always turn out the way you planned. Beautiful night though, sunset, storms in the background, lightning going off over there, so beautiful place. We did in fact get the chance to come back during the rut. This time, I'm going to try and take one of these bucks that moved in here with my Matthews Vertex bow. What an awesome way to pursue these monsters. Thanks for sticking with me on this frustrating hunt. I just located in a stockable area a buck that has more mass than Sunday morning. Let's try and put this Matthews to work. He was bird dogging something up there.
seven. The buck went over the rise and out of sight. I decided to quickly cut some yards off as he's not worried about us, just his depraved mind with that doe. see him? He's right there behind that down log. Let's see if I can draw behind this tree without him squirting out of there. Oh, there he goes, right through the wheelhouse. Good job. 54. Good job. Good job. Good job. Well, was because he, he went like this and the doe went around underneath this, underneath this, and he ran over here and stopped on the other side of that, on the other side of that log. I thought, all I could see was the tops of his horns. I went, you're screwed, buddy. And so we just used this cover. I ran right up here. Drew stepped out and thunk. Well, that was worth coming back down here. That was pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that fletching barely sticking out of his shoulder. I moved a little far forward. And I'm a little worried about the quarter in the way shot. The, the amount of blood, he's got to be dead. He's got to be dead. I think he went down. Oh, there he is. There he is. <laughs> that is a stud buck. I can't be happy. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Why don't you jump up and <laughs> gore me? Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> oh my gosh, look how heavy that buck is. Go head to head with one, with the, one of these guys in archery equipment when they're hard horned. That's saying something. What a heavy buck! I mean, that's heavy. Big long main beans. I mean, good lord, he's got long main beans. The only thing he's just a little short on his G3s, but I will take it. Take it, man! What a buck! He's old. Big old Roman nose on him. Great face. Just an awesome buck here in Colorado. He's got freaking messed up ears. He's just an old, old battler. See his little, got some droppies. Oh, he does? Oh, oh my gosh, I didn't even see that. I shot hey, I shot time. a drop tine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a drop tine buck. We shot the drop tine. I could hang a ring on it if I said, if I put the antlers upside down. Yeah. <laughs> Well guys, thanks for joining me today. We were able to put the sharp stick through this big old heavy mule deer. It was just a ton of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Remember, fair chase is the only way to hunt, take trophy big game. We'll see you next time right here on Eastman's. Bladed right there, that's cool. Actually, both sides of that's bladed. Really cool. That's five inches or better. He's, he's five inches up there. You just don't get that. <laughs>